nucleic acids. We started talking about the cell, we talked about the nucleus. So right now, know that you have DNA and RNA. These are basically the information to make all of those proteins is stored in the DNA. Amino acids make up proteins. So if you put amino acids together, you get proteins. If you put something called a nucleotide together, you get DNA or RNA. So nucleic acids are made out of nucleotides. Proteins are made out of amino acids. A nucleotide has three different parts. The first thing it has is a sugar molecule, and this is a pentose sugar. Pentose means there are five carbons in the sugar. The sugars we've been talking about, the monosaccharides we've been talking about, glucose and galactose and fructose, those are hexose sugars. They've got six carbons. Remember C6H12O6, right? This is a little bit different. These are pentose sugars. They've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. They've got one less carbon. So you've got this pentose sugar, this five-carbon sugar. On one end, on the fifth carbon, you have a phosphate group. On the first carbon, you have what's called a nitrogenous base. So if you take a nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar, and a phosphate group, that whole thing is a nucleotide. You put a bunch of those nucleotides together, and you have nucleic acids, either DNA or RNA. Two basic types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. What's the difference? The first thing is the sugar. In DNA, the sugar is called deoxyribose. RNA is ribose. So that's one way that DNA, or R DNA and RNA are different. The sugar, the sugar that makes up the nucleotides, is a different sugar. RNA is ribonucleic acid. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, what's the difference? Well, ribose has an extra oxygen. On this second carbon, that's the first carbon, that's the second carbon, on the second carbon... This one has an OH group. On the second carbon at deoxyribose, it doesn't. So one of the differences between RNA and DNA is what sugar is present in the molecule. Now, we talked about the, pho the phosphate group being attached to the fifth carbon. The bases, the nitrogenous bases, the thing that's attached over here to the first carbon, those are the A's and the T's and the C's and the G's, the things that you always heard about DNA. A nitrogenous base is just something that, now what's a base? A base is anything that does what? It makes the pH go up. And it makes the pH go up by making what go down? Good. Hydrogen ions. See, y'all know some stuff. So these are bases that contain nitrogen. That's all that nitrogenous base means. That's the chemistry of it. But our bodies use these nitrogenous bases to encode the information to make the proteins. We said that DNA contained the information to make proteins, right? It stores the information to make proteins, our genetic material, right? Okay. That information is encoded in the order of the bases, the A's, the T's, the C's, the G's, and the U's. Now, which brings up the second difference. D both DNA and RNA have adenine. They both have cytosine. They both have guanine. DNA contains a base called thymine. RNA con doesn't contain thymine. It contains uracil. So there are five possible nitrogenous bases, A, T, C, G, and U. DNA contains A, C, G, and T. RNA contains A, C, G, and U. If you'll notice the structure of these, C, T, and U have a single circular structure. A and G have two circular structures, two ring structures. And so the class of compounds, the single structure, the single ring structure is called a pyrimidine. And the way I think, the way I remember that, it's not spelled exactly, but like the pyramid, that's like one thing. So that's how I remember the single rings are the pyramids. Double ring structures are called purines. Now, why is that important? Because pyrimidines always hook up with purines. And in fact, they hook up in a specific manner. Adenine binds with either thymine or uracil. Guanine and cytosine always hook up together. We say these are complementary base pairs. Yeah, they are complementary. They complement each other. They fit together. G doesn't fit with T. C doesn't fit with A. I had to remember which ones are the pyrimidines. Cut, C-U-T. You get cut on a pyramid. Okay. A, G, Ag, Korea. Goat child. Ag, for culture. <laughs> Remember when we talked about, we were talking about the proteins, and we said we linked the amino acids together. What was that bond called? Peptide, Peptide bond, right? And the, the carboxyl group on one amino acid hooked up with the, with the amino group on the next one? Okay, you got the peptide bond? Okay. The way nucleotides hook up is the sugars and the phosphates 
the, the sugar of one nucleotide binds to the phosphate of the next nucleotide. And what that leaves is the base sticking out to the side. So we say that DNA and RNA have a sugar phosphate backbone with the bases sticking out to the side. The bases are always attached to the first carbon of the sugar. The phosphates are always attached to the fifth carbon of the sugar. Here's our sugar, right? Okay. First carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. The phosphate group is attached to the fifth carbon. The base is attached to the first carbon. That third carbon right there, that's where the sugar of this one attaches to the phosphate of the next one. So here's a nucleotide. Base, sugar, phosphate. This sugar attaches to the phosphate of the next nucleotide. Sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. With the bases sticking out to the side. Notice that you get carbons in the bases too. So they're just plain carbons. So the, the carbons in the sugar always are numbered with a little prime. That just means that's the carbon in the sugar. But we say the three prime hydroxyl group of the first nucleotide attaches to the phosphate of the next nucleotide. All right, third difference between DNA and RNA. RNA is a single-stranded molecule. DNA is double-stranded. So what that means in RNA, you just got one sugar phosphate backbone with the bases sticking out to the side. DNA, you've got two sugar phosphate backbones, each one with DNA with, with uh, excuse me with bases sticking out to the side. And so we say DNA is a double helix. Not only do you have two sugar phosphate backbones, each one with their different bases sticking out, but once these guys hook up with hydrogen bonds, then the whole thing, it's like a ladder that gets twisted. Now, if one side of my DNA has A and T and C and C and G, guess what the other side's going to have? They have to have the system. The complement. Right. So if this side has A, what's over here? T. T. Don't worry about you yet. Okay. But if I were reading DNA to make RNA, I'd put U instead of T. And the way these two, the way the bases, the complementary, complementary bases are attached to one another is by hydrogen bonds. You can have either, between A's and T's, you have two hydrogen bonds. Between C's and G's, you have three. And so what that does, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is that if you have one side, that serves as a pattern or a template to make the other side. Right. Now, there are three types of RNA we'll talk about later. High energy compounds. We've been talking about ATP. I keep saying your cells break down glucose to make ATP, right? ATP is what our cells use for energy. The reason I talk about high energy compounds right here is because the A, this A, that's the part, that's part of ATP. That's the A in ATP. Adenine is the nitrogenous base. You take adenine, you stick good old ribose on it, and you have adenosine. So adenine plus ribose is adenosine. So you take adenine and stick a ribose on it, you have adenosine. And then if you stick one phosphate on it, you have AMP, two is ADP, three is ATP. And my point here is you can take all of these bases and make a high energy compound. Our cells just prefer to use ATP.